Testing, testing. All right. Welcome, everybody, to Can Hammer TV. My name is Darren, your host. Can Hammer is your source for Warhammer from the Great White North. You know, for whatever reason, I put that on all my bat reps, but I never say it when I'm live. That's weird. Anyway, uh, thanks for joining me, everybody. Uh, we've got a, uh, a cool show for you tonight. Uh, we'll be talking a little bit about uh, some news, and uh, we will, of course, be going on to part two of our Custodes Tactica and uh, other things. So uh, do, do keep watching. Thank you very much for your support on YouTube and on Patreon and here on Twitch, as well as our sponsors, Dan and Dylan, Red Dragon, and... Um, uh, guys over at Dream Tea. So, thank you very much. We'll get right into it. So, one thing was uh, announced yesterday. It was announced a while ago, but now they're starting to leak it, which is the Free Cities of Sigmar uh, book, which sounds like it's going to literally have like 15... I exaggerate, of course, but it's going to have a lot of all these tiny little Sigmar factions that don't have enough models for themselves, all crammed into one book, all with common keywords and battalions. And so it's going to be pretty interesting how they make this book so that everything has a chance to be played, but the cross-faction combos are going to be okay. Now, it wasn't too long ago when people were playing mixed order lists where they would just take things from different books. There was no real synergy, but these things individually were pretty good and it was pretty successful. So if you add synergies to that, it's going to be pretty hardcore. This includes phoenixes and the dragon temples and all these guys are going to be in this book. Uh, so it's pretty interesting to see what they end up doing with that. Apparently, then they're also releasing a, like a not a new rule book, but like a a summary book where they're going to put all the different stuff in there. I mean, Sigmar kind of screwed the pooch with that in that when the new 2.0 came out, like when the new one came out, there was the General's Handbook, then there was Malign Sorcery, then there was the rule book, and it was already right off the bat like three books for different rules from different places. So that'd be nice if they just consolidated that. And then, um, uh, and then the Forbidden Power is another one. And so all these things in different places. So hopefully that's what that book is about. Interestingly enough, they also leaked, uh, told us that they're doing something like that for 40k. I read through that paragraph a couple of times. And I couldn't really figure out exactly what that book is going to be. Um, so, and this is hot on the heels chapter proof coming out like in a couple of months. So I don't really know what the 40k book is going to be. Um, it would be really nice if they just consolidated all the FAQs. And there's some people in the community who have done that. But it would be nice if there was some consolidation in, in that regard. So maybe that is what that is. Um, but uh, otherwise, uh, we're getting more Marines coming up. We, we just had the uh, second, uh, two, second two supplements. So Raven Guard and... Um, Iron Hands, and then now we're getting Fists and Salamanders will be the last two. And that will be it for Marines. Then the real question is, what's happening to the other Power Armor factions? Space Wolves, Blood Angels, Dark Angels, are they going to get any releases? We'll see. There's literally been no leaks about that. I haven't heard any rumors about that. So that will be interesting to see what happens to those factions. Uh, you know, Death Watch, Grey Knights, you know, there's a lot of those little factions. Um, then there has been uh, a new Jane Czar model uh, just put out, to, not put out, but like uh, they showed us today the new Jane Czar model, which is pretty cool. It looks like the old one, just like much better sculpt. So that's cool for you Eldar people out there. Dark Angels, uh, Bizarre 40k Beast, welcome. Dark Angels leaks came out today, coming in next White Dwarf mag. Okay. I uh, did not, uh, I must have missed that while I was working or something, so good to know. Uh, so, of course, you know, the last also had Dark Angel stuff, and there was nothing in there. So I won't hold my breath until I see a separate book. 
but uh, but we'll see. And then, so yeah, uh, Jane Czar new model, and apparently a amazing new model coming out next week that is Jane Czar's nemesis, and I don't know who that is, but some people knowledgeable in the fluff of Eldar have told me that it is Drezar, whoever that is. So looks like we're going to probably end up getting a whole bunch of um, Exarchs and um, plastic uh, Aspect Warrior kits, which would be cool. Uh, not that we need more Eldar, but you know, that's cool. Uh, Sukala Mink, welcome. Uh, do I think the FKs drop FAQs dropping this week? So what's interesting is I just posted about this today on our Facebook, but normally by end of August, there's all this, definitely after Nova, there's all this FAQ talk, right? Like everyone's like FAQ, FAQs, people posting fake leaks, FAQ, 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 rumors, rumors, Spiky Bits is losing its shit. So, but this time there's been nothing. Nobody's said, where's the FAQ? You guys are the first people to ask me, where's the FAQ? What do we think about the FAQ? Nobody's podcasting about it. It's like weird. There's been like FAQ silence. Um, so it's just, it's interesting that that has happened this year. And maybe because they're distracting us with all this space marine shit. But nobody has talked about the FAQ. But of course it's September. We're expecting the FAQ any day. Um, so I expect it will be Wednesday this week. Tomorrow? No, it'll be next week, probably. Or, or this weekend. Um, but yeah, so that's weird. Um, so yeah, do I have uh, predictions? I think... It would be weird if they did not zero to three flyers. I think there's been so much flyer spam, Eldar flyer spam specifically, that they would be. They uh, I can't see how they don't do that. Even though, especially after London GT, I just don't see how they don't do that. I don't see how they don't do that. Uh, I see that do. I see them doing that. Um, so uh twitch village idiot welcome yeah i just talked about that little mini rule book i don't really know what's in there so i don't know but um yeah uh shukla mink do i think there will be a change to stacking negative modifiers um i don't think so you know why because i think you take away eldar flyers and that's not a big a deal anymore uh as you can see, a lot of the newer generation next gen books have reroll hits instead of reroll failed hits, so that really lessens the impact of negative modifiers. Um, and uh, other than plague bears, which are probably going to get a hit in chapter approved, there's not a lot of other stacking of minuses, so I don't know if they need to do anything about that. We'll see. Um, they could easily just, you could just say you can only ever have one minus hit modifier, like period. I don't know. I mean, they could easily do that, but um, uh, I, I don't know if they have to do that now because um, the, the the biggest thing was like the flyers, right? And so, you know, um, so, so I think those are some things that will be in the FAQ. Who knows what else they change? I can't remember which rules are still beta and which are not. I just lose track. Um, so whichever ones are beta will probably get finalized. That'll be in the FAQ um and uh, stuff like that so i think that'll be cool maybe there's going to be something in the faq about legends i don't know i don't know when they were planning on doing that but now's as good a time as any to be honest um so who knows but the faq certainly will uh impact the latter you know quarter of the season heading into the christmas season and lvo so faq chapter approved are the next big things unless you're imperial fist or a salamander player so um yeah uh, we'll talk about chapter approved when we get closer to the time because that's usually what in, uh, end of october november time so yeah so not a lot of talk about faq but it's obviously coming and it uh, should be it should be interesting uh right let's just switch tack a little bit to p and p so the first uh p not first p and p p and p 13 or 14 i lost track dan tells me it's 14 um out of the series of eight that we've planned for this year happened last weekend uh chris won that chris beat uh eldar flyer spam to win uh p and p and uh get himself uh, on the board on the trophy and so that was cool that was just a small event like 10 people and next one's going to be 20 people i'm going to the next one in october so do stay tuned i'll be bringing my golden boys to test them out and uh so pmp is uh, doing pretty well 
And then, of course, Can Hammer Team Tournament. Uh, registration is open October 2nd, which is in two weeks. Two weeks? Next week. Next week. Next week, Wednesday. Uh, just after, just just a bit earlier than right now, uh, Can Hammer Team Tournament registrations will open. So remember, you have to sign up through the app, t- uh, through the BCP app or through the BCP on the web. Um, and you sign up and you pay there. And if you're on the list, you're on the list. There are 100 spots. So that is uh, 20 teams of five. So you've got to be ready to go or just pay out and, and put a placeholder on there. But uh, yeah. So, um, looking forward to that. I'll be um, trying to live stream during when the when the registration opens. I'll open it right on stream right here, and um, that should be fun. We'll see who uh, who gets themselves in. Um, yeah, so that's looking pretty good. Um, and uh, the ETC are going to have a vote soon, probably after the FAQ. Um, Chris tells me. And the next major rules votes will probably be after chapter approved. So those will be the next two things. We do not have an up- updated uh, ETC pack yet. Uh, so as of right now, it's as last year's. Um, but you can certainly start making your teams five mans, one faction each, blah, blah, blah. Same as, same as last time. Okay. Zooming along to... Um, Let's uh, get straight into uh, some uh, hobby. So I've been painting, uh, finishing off my Venatari. I don't still think I don't I'm not going to use them, but they're basically done. I just have to do the base, which is going to be tricky because they're pinned to the base, so I can't just airbrush it. I'm going to need to wrap my parafilm around the model, and then I can spray the base. So I don't know if you've ever seen this stuff. Let me uh, let me just show you. So I got this idea from somewhere online. Maybe it was Moggy's. Moggy's Miniature, the guy who does really nice uh, custodies airbrushing. But this is parafilm. They use this in the lab. And basically it's paraffin film that's stretchy. And it doesn't stick. It's not adhesive, but because of surface tension, it ends up adhering. Um, So it does not take off paint. Um, So... This is definitely really cool, and you can cut however much you want. It comes in a big strip like this. You know, a little piece stretches out into a big coverage, and by using surface tension, you can cover a surface of any proportion, of any shape, uh, things sticking out, and then protect it for, uh, for painting. So that's what I use uh, to mask things. Rarely do I use anything else because this is so useful. Um, so that's a hot tip of the day, Parafilm M. You can get a box for like 10 bucks or something off the internet. Um, so I got a wrap, like, so my dudes are like standing on one foot with the wings and then they're standing on these marble columns. And so I have to wrap the model so I can spray the base. So I'll get on to it at some point. I've been screaming through the Sagittarium. Um, I've been uh, copping out a little bit. I figured out that instead of edge highlighting with a lighter shade of gold, I could just dry brush and it looks the same. So I did that. And then I um, also did a bit of dry brushing with the silver instead of picking out all the edges on just the shoulder pads where it's really nicely uh, sculpted. So it picks it up really nicely. And then just filling in the details and my Sagittarium will almost be done and we'll see the light of day soon, hopefully. Received a bunch more bases from Dragonforge, my marble bases, so that's good. So they're ready to go. So they'll come together pretty soon. And then I will finally finish my um, Orion. And then, and then I maybe finish Custodes. Unless they bring something else up, that's cool. But I, I'm literally done out of the complete model range they have now. I have almost everything. I just have not bought the uh, the new Ares gunship. It's kind of cool. It's got like the little core that sticks out the back. It's pretty cool, but I'm not buying one of those. So um, I will finally be done painting gold. Yeah, so there we go. <laughs> So, uh, that's what I'm up to hobby-wise right now. 
Uh, I'm also playing a lot of Borderlands 3 so uh, with Phil and a couple of guys. So uh, that is taking up a lot of hobby time. Uh, I will not be ashamed to admit. So that is what it is. Okay. So we were going to mark the time now for the start of Custodes Tactica Part 2. So thank you very much for all your kind comments on my Custodes Tactica Part 1 video. Um, that was seemed to be very well received. I have a lot of good feedback on it. So far, no negative feedback on it. So thank you very much for feeding back to me what you want to, me to do and what you want to see because that's really who I'm doing it for. Um, so thank you very much. If you've missed it, you can watch it. It's probably still on Twitch, but probably best to watch it on YouTube. Um, and I put it into a separate playlist called Custodes Tactica, and they will all be chronologically lifted there. It'll just be a Canhammer live stream like this, except I uh, wrote in the bottom what the when the um, the timestamp for when the Tactica starts, so you can just go to the Tactica. The intention is not for them to be extremely long, but the, you know maybe over a course of like an hour, you could hopefully watch all the Tactica videos eventually, and a uh, nice little run through Custodes. So. Part two today, we're going to talk about two things. Last time we covered Valoris and the foot shield captain. And um, today we are going to cover the biker captain, one of my favorite characters in all of 40k, the shield captain on bike. And we are going to cover the Vexilus Praetor, or what you may just hear most of us refer to as the Vexilla or the Vex. There we go. So, uh, he's not an HQ. He's an elite slot, but he is a character. Okay. Let's talk about Shield Captain. So, what advantages are there of putting your Shield Captain on a bike? There's quite a number. Now, um, in terms of the point difference, um, the normal shield captain, let me just rack them up here just so I have the exact numbers for you. So a normal shield captain is 112 and um, plus weapon. A shield captain in Terminator armor is 122 plus weapon. So this dude, as is with the Hurricane Bolter, and I think there's no other way to run them, is 160 so almost 40 points more than the foot version so what do you get for that you get 14 inch move fly that alone is almost worth the price of admission fly is an amazing keyword is one of the best keywords in the game so many good things happen when you fly and not that many bad things happen to you when you fly there's a few things that have pluses to hit against fly whatever Fly is almost like what well, maybe the best keyword in the whole game. Uh, paint pot, welcome, Karen. Yes, he's only 20 points more than the Smash Captain. Smash Captain does more damage, yes, but you need more CP into it, and it's a, it's a little bit different. I don't like con comparing those two because you know, and uh, so we're, and we're talking pure custodies now. So, so 160 points, 14 inch. Auto advance six if you need to advance. I actually rarely advance, but at the end of the game, you need to move 20 inches somewhere. He's your man. Um, and he will be alive at the end of most games. So 14-inch um, move, super key versus a cap, uh, normal captain, which is six-inch. Um, and um, fly, so key because key. Now, you do give up infantry. So if you have no infantry, you might want to consider the captain on foot. But, um, you know, keeping that in mind... But yeah, so um, there you go. And then so usual custodies, so two up BS weapon skill, everybody, I'm not going to talk about those because everybody has the same. So you gain an extra toughness and to go from T5 to T6 is a big deal. Um, I always notice when my Terminators are getting wounded with T5 and these guys are T6, makes a big deal. Um, so, um, you know, it can be a big deal. It's not always a big deal, but it can be just in terms of reducing a three up to a four up to wound 
etc so you get an extra toughness for it you get more wounds so these guys are seven wounds seven wounds is key now we're starting to see marine characters with six and seven wounds so but seven wounds means you take four wounds of two damage weapons you have to take three wounds from three damage weapons or you just have to take a lot of one damage wounds seven wounds is key you can survive a d6 smite um you can survive two to three normal smites so especially with your six up uh emperor save so seven wounds is is a nice number um and it's very key so um and then of course he has five attacks standard for custody's character and he has the spear so ideally you want this guy charging so he gets reroll wounds and he can do some damage um you know just on a without even charging i did six wounds to a battle wagon just random damage so can be decent as i said hurricane bolter uh there is no reason to run the other gun it's a lot more expensive for really it's really crappy i think actually it averages out to the same number of wounds um so hurricane bolter is the only thing you should be running on bikes this guy auto hitting basically rerolls his own ones hitting on twos re-rolling ones and then just deleting chaff left right and center so definitely um uh hurricane bolter on these guys and so the cool thing about these guys, they get stuck in the combat, then they just fly out and they can keep shooting. So the, the bikers are really good for that, and the captain is really good for that. The captain is not really much better than the normal biker, except that he's harder to kill. Now, um, your shield captain should not be your warlord. Generally, if you're using a shield captain well, he's being aggressive. I feel that strongly. I almost always lose my shield captain, but he does a lot for me before he dies. Um, so I never make him my warlord. And um, depends what kind of list you're playing, obviously. If you're playing a bike spam list and you only have two shield captains as HQs, then one of those guys is going to be your warlord, possibly. But even then, I would make the Vexilla the warlord, and we'll come to that when we talk about him. But uh, he's rarely my warlord, but I always give him the free relic. There's not that many good relics in the Custodes book. The two three plus involved ones are the ones that you will see most commonly taken, and he gets one of those. And probably the Orc Aquilus, which is three up involved, reroll charges. So the reroll charges come in handy a number of times, and obviously three up involved, really good. Um, if you watched my stream uh, last night, last night, two nights ago, last night, uh, against Peyton, so this guy, one wound left, survived uh five boys with a knob a knob with wah banner a pain boy uh 20 gretchen uh, two rounds of combat with a battle wagon with a death roller all on one wound um so if you're good at your three ups this guy will just live um so and he's so annoying because he can kick little units butts he can tag vehicles he can kill chaff he can kill uh he's really good at sniping characters because he just pops out there from combat you know people think you're tied up and then you just retreat from combat right next to a character spray him with 12 hurricane bolter shots so um it's, it's very useful as an aggressive forward character supporting your bike unit giving them their reroll one supporting any units uh, really can because of the mobility can really from nowhere get into that six inch reroll one bubble so um it's really good so that's the other thing he's a captain so he gives reroll ones to hit which is actually not a huge deal for custodies but is really nice good basically you're auto hitting um so that is the nice thing about the captain um it whether you deep strike or not really depends on your list. So I can't, I'm not going to talk about it now. We'll talk about that when we talk about lists. But there is obviously an option to deep strike him. Um, I never have played in, with enough CP where I wanted to you know, fight when I die or that sort of thing. So, But obviously that might be useful on a case-by-case -case basis. But um, yeah. So is a shield captain on bike an auto-include? I think... For most custodies, pure custodies lists, so this includes battalion style lists, this includes my style kind of toolbox, no battalion list, bike spam lists, vehicle heavy lists. I think if you have two HQs, one is Valoris and one is this guy. If you only have one HQ, like say you're playing Triple Orion or something, then you're going to have to think 
between this guy and Valoris. So Valoris is 25 points more, but this guy is way more mobile, but Valoris gives reroll once to wound. So the the question is, if you're playing like three Orions or something, which I don't think people will be doing anymore, can Valoris keep up, right? And this guy can definitely keep up. So I think if you're running a 2HQ style list, one is Valoris and one is this guy. So he's kind of like an auto take in that respect. So there's not really too much more to say about... Uh, oh, yeah. So the other thing to keep in mind is that um, he can um, heroically intervene. Okay, so don't forget he's a character. That can be a big deal because he'll do some damage on an intervention. The other thing, of course, is he can stooping dive. Um, so... Um, Often, you know, if your bike unit gets charged and the, and the captain's right behind them, then he can stooping dive. So if you're playing a battalion and you have lots of CP to burn, you can stooping dive him and he could make a big difference. Um, so keep that in mind because stooping dive also means it's a charge and he gets to reroll wounds. So um, keep that in mind. Even your single biker captain on a stooping dive can be quite effective. Um, and definitely on a heroic is something because they're so fast, they just sneak in within three inches of somebody. So that's the other thing. Uh, of course, the shield captain is obsec, which is great. And so being able to move 14 to 20 inches automatically, popping an obsec guy onto there who will be able to shoot something and charge something and clear that objective off, really, really useful for capping objectives, taking over objectives, last minute game objectives, line breaker, uh, sneaking in warlord kills. I mean, there's so many ways of using the shield captain on bike. Um, and I think if you just sit him at the back as a buff bot, you're really not using him to full potential. So I think it's important to think of ways that you can use your shield captain effectively. Now, um, keep in mind he is a character. So if you're smart with how you move, you can be aggressive with him and still have character protection. And that's when he gets so annoying for the opponent to deal with because they are constantly trying to like think about this captain and then he's constantly can't shoot at him and it, there's other things to worry about so it, it, it can be such an effective character and don't give out one wound left you can last all right two up three up uh one wound left being able to fall out and shoot things you can really keep going until you lose that very last wound okay so the one thing we're going to talk about just quickly is uh before we finish talking about hqs is um is the um um victor of the um hunger games or victor of the blood games <laughs> i call it victor of the hunger games um the crying game so this is a stratagem for two cp that when you deploy the character you can give him an opportunity to reroll a hit or wound or save um once per um like once per uh, once per turn. I used to think that this was one of the best uh, stratagems that we had. Because of course you can do it more than once. Um, but a couple of things wrong with it. First of all, 2CP is a lot. Now that we don't have CP batteries. 2CP is a lot. Especially in my list, I can't do it. But even in a battalion list, it's still a lot. And Dev, if you want to use 4CP for that, definitely not advised. So 2CP still by itself is a lot. Um, the re-roll, you don't usually need to re-roll a hit because you have re-roll ones and you're hitting on twos. You often don't need to re-roll a wound. It doesn't come in handy that often that you'd want to spend 2CP on it. To be honest, you could just spend up to one or two CB rolling those wounds individually. And the save, while sometimes useful, again, you could spend that CP otherwise up to two times to be the same effect. And generally, um, unless you're really going balls to the wall with him, it's not taking that much damage. So I have found that uh, Victor at Hunger Games not really that worth it. I'd like to know other people's experience with Victor of the Hunger Games, but it's generally, I don't find it a useful use of 2CP. Maybe it used to be when you could just recycle one or two of them back, 
because uh, then that's annoying, even if I remember to use it, which was not often. Um, so yeah, so I don't think it's worth it while we're on the topic of characters. Um, yeah, and that's about it. And the CP that you had to spend to like fight on death and stuff like that, while that's also cool, again, like, you know, we're, t we're tight on CP. We can't afford stuff like that generally, unless it's really, unless you're going to win the game by doing that and you still have the CP. So that's basically Shield Captain on the bike. These guys are the bomb and uh, all basically like list auto include as your second HQ. Play them aggressively and but safely and they will reward you with their durability and power. Uh, don't get greedy. If you got two HQs, one's got two damage left, one's got three damage left, don't do what I did on Monday, which I swear I would never do again, but I just did it, is don't split your attacks. Just make sure you kill one. That's most important thing, especially IDC. Make sure you kill one. Like, don't try and be greedy because they can fluff big time. So they're not actually as hard hitting as people would think, especially without the re-rolling wounds but um, they have a certain reputation. So keep that in mind. You can use that to your advantage. So there we go. Shield Captain on bike. All right. Let's go to the main man, the Vex. The Vexilla, the Vexilus Praetor. Okay, so this guy's an elite slot, but he is a character. Five wounds. Um, and uh, like a normal guardian, so T5 and two up, four up. Okay, so he's not that, you know, he's not that beefy, but because he's usually standing surrounded by things that he's giving minus one to hit to, he's usually fairly, uh, he usually doesn't die because um, he doesn't get shot. The, uh, but snipers will kill this fucker. Yeah, he will die. Vindicare has a good chance of killing him in one or two turns. Um... And those eliminators and stuff like that, hardcore sniping, this guy will die. So, uh, one auto include in the list last time was Valoris. If there's another auto include in the custodies list, it is the Vexilla. So, the Vexilla is auto include statement. You always want to bring the Vexilla. It is just so useful still, unless things really change with the negative modifiers we we're talking about earlier. Minus one to hit is strong, and it's relatively stronger in custodies because we're hard to kill. So after you get through the minus one to hit, then you still got to get through all our armor and saves. So very strong. Um, so uh, we'll just so I'm not gonna talk much about him. You know, four attacks, five attacks, whatever. Uh, loadout wise. Uh, weapon so he can carry all sorts of different weapons i like to give him something to do some impact so i usually just give him a guardian spear but if you're going for points and you need to shave eight points then just give him a misericordia single misericordia he can still kill some stuff with that and um and save some points if you want to go just for durability you can actually just run him with a storm shield so now he's two up three up native minus one to hit so he can get pretty hard to kill and then you make this guy your warlord first of all because he rarely dies uh russell timmerman welcome rarely dies so you're not going to give up slay very often second of all he's hard to kill minus one to hit two up maybe a three up if you bought a storm shield and then you give um i used to give him the funeral pain five up funeral pain warlord trait and so he was really hard to kill I found that that hardly ever came in hand, hardly ever came in handy, and now I'm a fan of the champion, the uh, heroic intervention warlord trait. So now I take that one, but he's still fair hard to kill, and nobody ever shoots him. But watch out for snipers. Okay, so he uh, has no particular special rules except for his banner. So there are three banners. One gives. Uh, they all give. Um, let me, I don't actually can't remember offhand the other two ones perfectly, so I'm going to look it up. Okay, so uh, so they allow all Imperium infantry and bikers within six inches to reroll morale tests. That could be useful, I guess, but we're talking pure custodies, so who cares? Um, and then, so the three ones, the Imperius gives plus one attack to units within six inches while that sounds good 
and probably is okay. It's not the best of the three Vexillas. Um, the Defensor, of course, is a 5-up invuln to Imperium Infantry, wholly within 9 inches. That is not that great because it's wholly within 9 inches. And, of course, we're talking Pure Custodies again, so we won't talk about that. So, really, that leaves Magnifico, which is minus 1 to hit, and it's 6 inches. And it's not wholly within, it's just within. So, that is clearly the best Vexilla. We won't even talk about the other two. Um, and so, take it. So that brings him to just over 110 points, and he's a bargain character with so much synergy. So when you're playing the Vexilla, you must, must, must do two things before you move anything in your turn. You have to plan for where the Vexilla is going to be if it's important for you to stay in your 6-inch minus 1 to hit bubble. So sometimes it's not important. Yet last time's game against Peyton, not important because everything's rolling on fives automatically and doesn't matter. So in a matchup where the, the modifier is not important, it doesn't matter. He can be a free roaming character, sit on a backfield objective, whatever. But if it's important, which in most matchups it is, you need to keep in mind where your Vexilla is going to be, pre-measure him, keeping in mind uh, average, advance, those sorts of things, and stay in your bubbles, Okay. Stay in your bubbles. The rookie custodies player will leave their bubbles, their reroll bubbles, and their minus bubbles. Stay in your bubbles. Him and Valoris at the beginning of the game, first two, three turns, are these little hand in hand guys walking down the street hand in hand, and they're just giving out bubbles. That's what they're doing. So stay in the bubbles. As the game goes on, the, the bubble becomes um, um, the. the uh, bubble the minus one to hit becomes less important later in the game reroll and minus one to hit bubbles so then you can start to get a little bit more liberal but at the beginning especially you gotta stay in the bubbles otherwise it's your fault um keep in mind he moves six and advances d6 so that if that's important for you you have to take that into account and um whether you move him first or last really kind of depends. I tend to try and move him first so then I know where everything else needs to go based on how fast he moved. So that's the first consideration, keeping in the bubble. And then you need, if you're playing a list like mine, where you're going to use the homer. So let's talk about the homer now. So this is, other than the minus one to hit bubble, the second most important function of the Vexilla is the teleport homer. Um... The only reason I need CP at all is for the teleport homer. And you, if you are deep striking things, you want to be homering them in if you can. It is just that powerful. So for 3 CP, you can bring in a unit that's in deep strike, wholly within 6 of the Vexilla, and outside of 3 inches of the enemy. That means you have a 3-inch charge, um, which is amazing. I have yet to fail a 3-inch charge after a homer. I'm sure it will happen someday. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna roll a double one, but I have yet to do that, and it's just amazing because that also gives you, if you roll high, a chance to wrap around things. So the Homer, the Vexilla Homer, is just key, 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 key. So you have to, if you're gonna use it, you have to make sure you keep three CP. Okay, don't be a rookie and use and be like, oh, I don't have two CP. Okay, because nine inch charge really sucks. You have to keep your 3 CP and you have to keep your Vexilla movement in mind up to 12 inches and then another wholly within 6 inch bubble for the Vexilla. So it's actually a, a, a further reach than you think, especially if you have a couple of turns of moving him and advancing him. So if your opponent is going to stay back, then you need to think about moving your Vexilla 6 to 12 inches every turn so that by turn 2, turn 3, you're homering in your guys in a decent range. Now, you might not be able to get holy within 3 inches, but even a 4 or 5 inch charge is better than a 9. So you got to keep that in mind when you're deploying your Vexilla and when you're doing your movement for the first two turns. And that is a key if you're playing a castle type list with Kaladis tanks or the Telamon at the back, not a very mobile list where you're playing a castle. When... You, when you move, you have to move your castle, but you also have to keep in, keep in your bubbles, and you but you have to move forward. So, actually, I noticed already in my last game where I replaced the Telamon with the two palace, the Telamon really tethered me at the back, and I really 
had to figure out when I wanted to start moving up and leave the Telemon because the Telemon doesn't want to move. So now I don't have the Telemon and I have this super mobile floaty tank castle that can just move around. It was super, it's, that decision point is gone. So keep that in mind. But those are the key things. Your bubbles and what's your plan for teleport homer because you should be doing that. Um, and it doesn't have to be Aqualon like I do it. You can do it to a bike unit. You can do it to a big guardian unit, wardens. Um, you know, there's lots of good targets for it um, for custodies. I guess a double fist Telemon. Um, so, so, but you got it. That's the big thing that you have to practice doing in all your games is where am I going to put the Vexilla to start? How are my bubbles doing? And then how am I going to move that to get me into a homer position? Um, you can run the Vexilla with a lot, with Terminator armor, but you're not starting him with Deep Strike because the whole point of it is to give you a protective minus one to hit bubble. So that is just wasted points. Um, so don't do that. Just run him base and just get good at moving, hiding him in ruins, using screens. You know, just just do that and, and you'll be fine. Um, it really is just a matter of practice, the most effective way of using the Vexilla. So... What else do we need to talk about the Vexilla? Those are the two main things. So the Vexilla and Valoris are the two auto takes of the Custodes Army. Um, and then Shield Captain is a close third auto take. So that's your character suite for a for any kind of starting Custodes Army. The only exception to that might be if you're doing bike spam, then you don't you might not take Valoris. Because you might not keep up with the bike army. Even the Vex even then you really have to keep yourself back to stay in your bubbles. The, when I used to play the 18 bike spam army, it was really hard to always try and stay in your minus one to hit bubble. Um so um because he's just a foot guy so it'd be so cool if we could run a banner guy on a bike zooming around on your bike with the banner floating behind him that would be so awesome but um yeah that would be awesome then it would be really easy to homer things in if your bike could move 20 inches oh that'd be great but anyway uh pipe dreams um so but those are your kind of your character suite valoris shield captain on bike vexilla Boom. And they will often start to huddle together with uh, surrounded by tanks and other units. So um, that's what you got. And be careful. He can he can be sniped. He's not that hard to kill. And um, I think he should be your warlord because he's naturally that much harder to kill with his minus one hit banner. He always has it within himself. Um, and not many people will be hitting him. So um, that's my thing. And he also tends to be up near combat units because he's there giving you keeping your combat units minus one to hit when they kill what they're fighting and now they're open to be shot they're there to homer people in so they can also do their six inch um heroic intervention warlord trait so i think it's just a great choice for uh for being your warlord okay so that's about it let me know if you guys have any questions on that on that topic um, as I said before, if you want me to cover anything specifically that I hadn't thought of covering, just let me know, message me on Facebook or here or leave a message on Canhammer or whatever, or our Discord chat. Do consider if you're into custodies and you want to join a really good custodies chat, um, consider joining our Discord. Uh, let me know if you need the link and we have a booming custodies chat right now um going on our discord server lots of chat lists flying around lots of strategy talk um so it's a really good chat going on right now for custodies so do join trying to make it a little hub for custodies russell timmerman what about the terminator vexilla yeah so i just mentioned so there's no reason to pay the points for that because you're not going to deep strike him you want him on the board giving you minus one to hit so there's literally no reason to make him a terminator um just save your points for something else um okay so next week i think we're going to uh talk about guardians um and so we will cover the basic guardian we'll also cover the two other weapon options um and we'll also talk about uh, we're going to talk about how the various ways of using your guardians as your basic troops in battalions and we'll probably talk about the sagittarium as well because they seem that that they're both we'll talk about the troop slot next time yeah troop slot so uh because we've got more troops now so um we'll definitely talk about the troop slot 
Guardians and SAGs next week, um, which will be a great topic because then we can start to start to touch on different kinds of custodies lists, battalion lists, non-battalion lists, uh, Guardian bombs, you know, the new Sagittarium kind of custodies meta. So we can start touching on those things uh, next week with our custodies tactica part three. Okay, well, thanks very much, guys. Um, I have no giveaways this week, but I will have the next two uh, supplements to give away next week, the Iron Hands and the Raven Guard ones. So do stay tuned. And uh, let me know if you have any questions, comments. Thank you very much for watching and all your support. Remember, can Amber Team Tournament registration is next week. So get your five-man teams ready, February 8th and 9th in Ottawa at the EY Center. Um, all the information is on the event page on our Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash canhammer. And with that, I wish everybody a good night. Uh, we will be podcasting on Wednesday, me and Chris talking about PMP. And on Thursday night, I have my rescheduled game against Jay and his Imperial Fists. That's going to be exciting. Next week, I'm playing uh, the new Ultramarines, Francois's Dirty Dirty Army. And then uh, two weeks after that, I'm playing Raven Guard. And then I think the week after that, I'm going to be playing Iron Hand. So I'm trying to get through all the Space Marine armies with my custody. So you'll be seeing a lot of Space Marines, but everybody wants to see Space Marines right now. So just giving people what they want. So uh, do stay tuned. Thank you very much for watching, guys. And good night. <laughs>